A claim often repeated is that lab-grown diamonds are chemically, optically, and physically the same as natural diamonds. But if that were true, how is it possible we can tell them apart? The truth is, lab-grown diamonds possess some of the same chemical, optical, and physical properties as natural diamonds, but also exhibit key differences that are related to the growth methods, atomic level defects, and impurities. Natural diamonds take hundreds of millions of years to form, whereas lab-grown diamonds take hours to a few weeks. As the lab-grown crystals grow, they leave behind traces of the process on an atomic level that gemologists can use to identify them, even after they are cut and polished. There are two processes by which lab-grown diamonds can be created, HPHT, high pressure, high temperature, or CVD, chemical vapor deposit. The crystal structure of each is reflected in the shape of the rough material. CVD diamonds grow in layers and form a cube. HPHT diamonds grow from the inside out, like natural diamonds, but form a cuboctahedral crystal, possessing both octahedral and cubic faces. These lab-grown crystal shapes are almost never seen in nature. Natural diamonds are almost always octahedral, eight-sided, or rarely dodecahedral, 12-sided. But the differences which result are optical as well. One of the primary and simplest methods to detect lab-grown diamonds is to shine short-wave UV light into the diamond. Natural diamonds are inert under short-wave, but lab-grown diamonds will fluoresce or phosphoresce, usually a teal or orange color. Meanwhile, many natural diamonds, roughly one-third, fluoresce blue under long-wave UV light, a typical black light or the UV light of the sun. Lab-grown diamonds never fluoresce blue under long-wave UV. Short-wave UV is not something you would see outside of a laboratory, while long-wave UV is all around us. Can lab-grown diamonds be detected without sophisticated equipment? Sometimes, lab-grown diamonds exhibit visible growth patterns, remnants, or flux at 10 times magnification. Otherwise, one can look for signs of natural origin, such as blue fluorescence and the presence of certain clarity characteristics, such as garnets trapped in the crystal. If a diamond is of an older or antique cut, it is most likely natural, but that distinction hardly serves as proof. The HPHT process requires more energy, but produces a superior product which is closer to its natural counterpart. But by far, the vast majority of lab-grown diamonds today are produced by the CVD method because it is faster and cheaper. Generally, CVD diamonds come out brown due to the vacancy clusters in the crystal lattice. But the CVD diamond is then treated post-production using HPHT annealing. Lab-grown diamonds sometimes have a hazy appearance due to the inherent defects in the starting material. Even though methods and treatments do impact the appearance of lab-grown diamonds, no disclosure is required on the laboratory certificate. Such treatments must be disclosed on the grading reports for natural diamonds as they are rarity factors. But the same is not true for lab-grown diamonds. The Federal Trade Commission requires treatment disclosure only when there is a notable difference in the value between the treated and untreated material. An analogy the growers of lab-grown diamonds like to promote is that a lab-grown diamond is just a diamond grown above ground rather than below, like a rose grown in a greenhouse rather than outdoors. But this analogy is false. There is no test you can run on a rose to tell where it was grown, but we can always detect a lab-grown diamond. Lab-grown diamonds are an excellent substitute for moissanite or cubic zirconia, but the value of lab-borne diamonds is declining rapidly.